Hello everyone, today we have exciting news and exciting guests here. This is Steve Wozniak. I had a lot of time because I never had parties or socializing or any of that sort of stuff. And Steve, he understood my brilliance. That was important to me. Oh, somebody else that appreciated my abilities. And so we became very best friends in a lot of ways. Your original idea to bring computing to everyone. Wow, bring computing to everyone, it's gonna change society. The crucial decision was putting money to my computer. What kind of mindset they should have to be like you? Number one, be honest. Say things that are true. Don't say them just because they sound good. I'm not teaching technology. You want everything to be fast and fast and fast. Those who read the most wound up being the smartest in school. Maybe there are shortcuts around reading and still coming to understanding. <music> Hello everyone, today we have exciting news and exciting guests here. This is Steve Wozniak and today we have our podcast regarding technologies, his lifestyle and other things. It will be interesting. Steve, we are very happy to have you here. We are very pleasure, honored to be welcome you in Central Asia University. So I, we have some couple of questions to you so we can start that you are often spoken about how much you love engineering, as I'm also engineers. So for the fun of it, you love engineering for fun of it. So Steve Jobs, he's a businessman. Yes, yes. So how much do you think fun and passion for engineer contributed to Abel's early big thoughts? Fun and what? And patience. Patience? Mm. Well, I was already um, a skilled engineer, way above others in a category that no one else did. And I didn't realize it was going to be important to the world at the time, but I just, um, what you're good at is what you value. So I just valued my engineering skills. And even without a college degree, I was hired by Hewlett Packard to design the very hottest products in the world, the most important products in the world. And because I could answer any question you asked about computers, I trained myself by doing it on my own when there were no classes, no books, no nothing. I just uh, figured out how it should be done and uh, became good at it. And so I was, I was already there. I was in that position. I was going to actually build the computers that became Apple at that point in my life for other reasons. It wasn't because there was a company or an industry to start or anything like that. But I wanted to always show off my, uh, my brilliance. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know. I, um, the computer that was all of Apple's revenues for the first 10 years, as we rose up and up and up in money in the world, um, that one computer designed it all on myself, nobody around me, no Steve Jobs or anything. Yeah, true. But he, he had met, we'd met five years before when I was actually building a computer of my own, built it and showed it off to the newspaper. But it was like what everyone else was trying to build five years later. I was five years ahead of that. Wanted to make things normal and simple for the human. The human's most important. And my computer had to look like a typewriter. Everyone in those days knew how to type. Mm -hmm. And and today, to some extent, we do too, although more it's a touchscreen. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I built that computer for myself, and that it turned out very lucky. Now, Steve, it was nice to know him because I was very shy. Mm -hmm. I was a geek. I had no... I had a lot of time because I never had parties or socializing or any of that sort of stuff. And Steve was, a, when I met him, he understood my brilliance. Mm. And that was important to me. Oh, somebody else that appreciated my abilities. And so we became very best friends in a lot of ways. And he was young and we both were young. And we were thinking of, you know, we were in the counterculture realm of the San Francisco Bay Area, very big at the time different types of thinking and summers of love and that sort of stuff. And it was a w different way of thinking about life. And he was more lived the life of a hippie. And I just admired it, but I didn't live it, live it as fully as he did. And the day I met him, I took him to my house. He was 16 years old. Steve had no record albums. He couldn't afford them. So I took him to my, my house and I showed him all the Bob Dylan albums and the liner notes and the strange interviews and the lyrics to the songs. And they were so different than any one normal person would come up with. And we both admired that. So that became a big part of our life, tracking down Dylan, Bob Dylan memorabilia, going to concerts and that sort of stuff. 
So back then, it was not talking about a company or anything. Steve did want to be important to the world because mm -hmm. he admired people that were known for being important. He just didn't have the academic background, but he had me. Great. So we always say that in dreams, always that have the same story. We always genius, but we are shy. <laughs> so <laughs> the, yes. second question is what you when you started Apple, your original idea to bring computing to everyone. Right now, do you think Apple still follows the same idea or it shifts the direction? Okay, first, it wasn't exactly my idea. There were a group of people that thought, wow, bring computing to everyone. It's going to change society. And that inspired me. I never raised my hand to speak at these meetings, but I listened to Stanford professors, Berkeley professors talking about how it was going to change the world if we could own our own computers. I just had all the abilities and the techniques and the knowledge, and I was right there to build a good, useful computer that was affordable. Everyone else was trying to build useless computables so that, <laughs> that might be affordable for a useless nothing, but I'd been there five years before. So um, uh, what was the question? Do you think like the idea, the origin idea to bring computing to everyone? Do you think right now Apple direction? Oh, Apple really? direction. Oh, you oh, 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 they shifted to another direction. Well, it's very different today. Um, First of all, back then, we had no money. There was no industry. It wasn't Computers weren't used the way they were. You could buy a computer and run some software to kind of help manage the numbers in your company if you were a manager. And there were, there were certain things. You could also play very good games on the computer. It was a game machine. It was the first time ever our computer, my Apple II, was the first time ever arcade games were color. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? They weren't color, and then they mm -hmm. went to color. It was the first time ever arcade games were software. A nine-year-old kid could write a good game in one night in a simple language called BASIC, where it used to be a skilled engineer with a thousand wires hooking them all up and getting them right for the signals into a TV. Um, no, this was a huge change in gaming. Computers should be fun as well as useful. And Apple, now, so you bought a product in those days. You bought your computer from Apple. You owned it. You set some things up on it. You ran a program and, and created uh, uh, some spreadsheet template. And you owned it and ran it. And that was, I, you owned it. It was yours. Today, today, you subscribe to everything. You have to get a million subscriptions. And they make changes to it out of your control. And they have your data. And they own it more than you own it. And so that's, um, it's very different now. It's, um, it's not like you just pay money and you own something. Pay money and then you have to pay more money every month just to use it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different world today. As far as Apple's, um, how Apple treats the world, um, I think they just treat it as a very successful financial operation. Okay, getting all the, the, the numbers right. We still have a very good reputation. We have a good culture and, uh, and that helps a lot. You know, if you don't have a brand, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not gonna make as much. So I'm very I'm very proud of Apple, but it's not the same game anymore. It's really keep your markets, protect them, grow them, you know, and 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 adapt to challenges within them. Not come up with new things that are so different that the world never saw them. Yeah, got you. Let me uh, ask you one more question regarding the Apple, and will be the, this is the last one regarding the Apple. So looking back, uh, what do you think was the most cru crucial decision was made by Apple? that make them in the long term so success like they are right now? The crucial decision was putting money to my computer. And I turned it mm -hmm. down at first. Mm -hmm. I turned it down. I did not do this for money. Mm -hmm. I did not want to lose my job at Hewlett Packard. And they said I had to leave Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard turned me down five times for the personal computer. Mm -hmm. But Mike Markla, with his money, he invested in us. Mm -hmm. He was a third equal partner and that was the big decision. From then on, Apple was going to be one of the largest companies in the world in 10 years from one product. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So, um, you know, it's it's a hard question to, to, to answer <laughs> one, one crucial decision. I mean, there were later points in time where there were um, key decisions, mm -hmm. which was to make good products. And you can blame Steve Jobs for that. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the credit for it, I mean. Yeah, Because, gotcha. yes, he, he did want to make good products and not lousy products. Mm -hmm. And that was always his thing. He just was not a computer engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And one more question is that a lot of, of our students really loves 
you like a person and they want to be like you. What kind of habits our students should to have and what kind of mindset they should have to be like you? Number one, be honest. Say things that are true. Don't say them just because they sound good. Mm -hmm. Don't distort, distort reality. Secondly, have self-confidence. If you believe in something, represent it as yourself why you believe in this and that. And even venture capitalists who want to put money into your ideas um, are want to see that you actually believe what you're talking about and you're not just making it up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and respect other disciplines. You might be an engineer. Marketing is another discipline. Business is another discipline. Operations and whatever comes eventually. But respect that the others are all important, all work together to uh, keep your company moving. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think the last question, which I will give to you, it's about the technical stuff. What kind of skills do you think engineers should have right now for the future? I'm not teaching technology yeah, at yeah, the I know. moment. Obviously, what's going on in the world? Be very um, aware of the technology world, the apps that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to people who are making announcements, even if it's just Twitter, <laughs> mm -hmm. make announcements about their own technology companies and products. Mm -hmm. um, always stay on top of those things, and that'll give you more ideas to think of and come up with your own ideas. Yeah. I have one question because... Oh, uh, good. Yes. In my my students, in my school, they are nowadays generation totally different. In our generation, we always read more than listening. Now they are listening more than reading. And the challenging coming that the students even not not patient even to have education right now. They want everything to be fast and fast and fast. And for developing one application, now it's very easy for them to do it. So what do you think is this will affect to their career in the future? Such kind of unpatient to educate and they want everything to be in fast track? I don't think about it that way. I really um, believe in as I grew up, as we grew up, reading was important. But those who read the most wound up being the smartest in school. So I believe that's probably still the case. Mm. Um, maybe there are shortcuts around reading but st and still coming to understanding. And AI is going to be a big factor in that too. Do I just look up AI, but I don't have to learn my own reasoning skills? Reasoning skills are very important. How are you going to think of new things that have never been done? AI can't do that. Yeah. It just all it can do is put into very good grammar and words what's already been done and been said by others, but coming up with a whole new idea, you have to kind of feel what people want. And yeah. feelings, emotions are what AI doesn't have. Great, so it comes from you because students always say, don't depend on ChatGPT. You have to make, you have to know how it works, not to use it. And the idea is that if you know how you can, how it works, then you can develop it. But the main problem that students say is that I can use ChatGPT for everything. That's why when you listen from you, from the person who make everything change, So it would be better to advise all the students how we can advise them. Well, tell all the students that they have AI, <laughs> actual <laughs> intelligence. Hmm. So you have been involved in other projects, not in the Apple. What is your favorite project in which you were involved? Every single one, even ones before Apple that were just to show off for fun and cranks that, um, you know, making TV jammers and things like that. Um, I really enjoyed making the first universal remote control. Mm -hmm. Had some very out of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. um, that was a fun company, and uh, tried to make what is now the Apple AirTag, but mm -hmm. I could not hit my engineering goals of cost and size and battery life. Mm -hmm. And um, Apple had a big advantage, which is a whole base of iPhones around the world to track your products. Um, so I don't know. I enjoyed them all so much. Startups are the most fun, important thing in the world for any, any, um, company or locale country or locale, uh, startups really are the heart of the economy because mm -hmm. startups create things that didn't exist before. It's not a zero sum game. We're not replacing something that existed. We're kind of looking at a whole different way of doing things. And it doesn't necessarily, it's not like company versus company. It's like, we're going to change the modality and that creates new wealth wealth for a country. Um, Uzbekistan is obviously well on the economic road <laughs> uh, to tops in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Steve, Thank you. For, yeah. your, for sharing with us your insights and Lily, this is will help us really for, sharing yeah. our, uh, for sharing our vision. 
And thanks for your vision. Thanks for your ideas. Thanks for all your advices for us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Susan, you're a little bit excited. Yeah, really. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for honoring me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.